previously on Jenny LeClue. Keith was an excellent listener. Or maybe he just didn't speak much. Either way, Jenny really enjoyed their little talks. He was the only person who really seemed to understand her. Jenny biked briskly towards the library back on campus to surprise her mother. Nothing exciting ever happens here, she grumbled, unaware of the great adventure that lay in store just around the corner. Gerald Strasbury. Cornelia Strasbury. It's a wall of Strasburys. The Strasbury lineage stretched back to the very founding of the university. There had been a Dean Strasbury at Gumboldt for over 150 years. There won't be for much longer. The Dean's retiring, and the only Strasbury left is Keith. And he's not exactly the academic type. No one on duty. A book thief's paradise. There's a note on the desk. was weird. Hello? Mom? Mr. Strasbury? Anybody? Jenny's words echoed through the library. Something's not right here. A mystery was unfolding. Whatever it is, I'll get to the bottom of it. Les Strasbury, Gumboldt's 21st and jolliest dean, smiled down at Jenny. Looking a bit wonky today, Mr. Strasbury. A pair of wires ran down the wall and disappeared behind the painting. It's too high to reach. What are you hiding back there? The chandeliers that adorn this library are made from rare Arthurtonian quartz, kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. The Glatz family was one of the oldest in town. They were the first to mine the valuable quartz deposits beneath Arthurton. And as such, they became incomparably wealthy. And they sure like to let everyone know it. Lattertron 5000, the pinnacle of remote ladder and bookcase technology, kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Whoa! Dangerous! The newly installed ladder system was prone to malfunction. 
Should have kept the old wooden ladders. They never tried to electrocute me. I need to find a way to turn the power off. Jenny gazed at the technological marvel of Laddertron 5000. Seems pointless. It's not hard to move a ladder. Sometimes it feels like some unknown force is just trying to slow me down. No good. I don't think I'll be able to move the ladders while the electricity is on. Jenny was notorious for climbing book carts. It's the only way to reach the highest shelves. In fact, this could be useful. But something else had caught her eye. This table's a complete mess. Who would leave it like this? Legible scribbles, intricate diagrams of giant machines, a worn copy of Aliens in Arthurton. Jenny knew only one person could have been sitting here. CJ. It's odd, though. He usually hides everything when he's finished. What's this? A tattered piece of paper with a series of seemingly unrelated notes. UFOs, shadow men, experiments on corpses. It seemed that CJ was unraveling a mystery of his own. Wait, there's something on the other side. Wow, a color map of Arthurton. Jenny had never seen a town map with this level of detail before. I can't believe CJ left this behind. That's so unlike him. He'd be terrified if anyone else found it. I'll keep it safe until I see him again.
no secrets between friends, Mr. Strasbury. Jenny stood on her tiptoes and delicately removed the priceless painting from the wall. Oops. Aha! Precisely what I was hoping to find. It was? Let's see. Lights, bookcases, ladders. I'll cut the power and continue my investigation. But Jenny knew better than to play with electricity, so she left it alone. I guess I'll find another way. Wait, what am I thinking? It's a simple switch, perfectly safe. But Jenny was strong in her convictions and seldom changed her mind once she'd made the correct decision. Fine. Actually, not fine. The eerie silence unnerved our tiny hero. But even worse was the dark. Jenny had always been terrified of the dark. Just breathe. A great detective never succumbs to fear. <sighs> Looks like that did the trick. Jenny stopped in her tracks. The sign clearly read, wet floor, caution. Her path was blocked. You're kidding me, right? Trampling muddy feet over a perfectly clean floor? She was a maverick, not a monster. Rare books. Our most precious collections reside in this temperature-controlled room. Kindly donated by the Glatz Foundation. Yeah, yeah, we know. The fallen remains of a bookcase blocked Jenny's path. It looks like a bomb went off in here. It's too precarious to climb over. locked. No problem, I'll just pick it. Jenny was skilled with a lockpick, having watched her mother demonstrate the process countless times. But that was just for fun at home. This was the real world. You couldn't just go around picking other people's locks. That was a crime. A great detective knows when to bend the rules. And the paperclip she has in her pocket. Mom always says, lockpicking is a subtle art. Move slowly and search for the sweet spot. Thank you. 
It must have been a rush of blood that caused Jenny to act so irrationally. Regardless, she had picked the lock and felt strangely exhilarated. What treasures lay behind the door? Oh, it's empty. Still, let book car could be useful. Something's blocking the ladder. There's something stuck in the track. Ipsa, scientia, potestas, est. It's the Dean's ring! No wonder the ladders were malfunctioning. The ring must have caused a short circuit. Keep hold of this and return it to the Dean when I see him next. Whoa! An empty library, a fallen bookcase, and now a broken balcony? This mystery has all the hallmarks of foul play. They say words can't hurt you. In this case, I'd be inclined to disagree. Solid iron and oak, torn apart like a piece of bread. It would have taken some serious force to do this. Something bad happened here. This is feeling more and more like a crime scene. And then Jenny saw it. Covered in a ripped curtain and surrounded by broken glass. It is a crime scene! Never forget the first time you see a dead body. It harrows the mind, terrifies the soul, scars you to your very core. A dead body? No way! This is amazing! Who lay under that curtain? Who had breathed their last breath? Who had shuffled off this mortal coil to meet their maker? It could be anyone. I mean, it could be an escaped lunatic from the asylum. Or an axe-wielding maniac on the run from the cops. It could be... It could be... Mom? Oh no. Please, no. No. You never forget the first time you see a dead body. Jenny knew it was wrong to disturb the crime scene. But I have to know who's under here. 
Slowly, she drew back the heavy cloth. Please don't be my mom. Please don't be my mom. Dean Strausberry! Thank God. Uh, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. Poor Mr. Strausberry. What happened to you? Was this a terrible accident? Or worse? Murder! Her stomach churned. Seeing the Dean's lifeless face, his contorted frame, Jenny felt the urge to run, to get as far away from this horrific sight as possible. I just... Jenny had longed for an adventure, for a real case to solve. I... didn't expect it to be like this. She gathered herself, took a deep breath, and began to search for clues. He looks like he's been dead for weeks. His skin is pale and colorless, and there's a strange mark on his neck. Dean's hand was clamped shut around a small object. That's strange. Rigor mortis usually takes hours to set in. I'm sorry for what I'm about to do, Mr. Strasbury, but this could be a vital clue. Mom's ID card? But that means... Julie LeClue had definitely been here. She could be the last person to have seen him alive. She could be the killer. Impossible. My mother's a forensic expert. She'd never leave such incriminating evidence behind. But even the smartest criminals made mistakes. Jenny couldn't deny this looked bad for her mum. If anyone else sees this, they'll jump to conclusions. They'll think my mom's a murderer. Unless... A peculiar thought crossed Jenny's mind. Unless... there's nothing to find. Removing evidence from a crime scene was highly unethical. So was planting evidence to frame an innocent person. She had no proof of that? I have to do something. My mom would kill me if she thought I tampered with evidence. Besides, she's innocent. The truth will come out. It's a book about predicting the future. I suppose it didn't belong to Mr. Strasbury then. It's smashed, most likely from the fall. The hand stopped at 3.57 p.m. That gives me a potential time of death. If Jenny had arrived just a few minutes earlier... I might have been able to save him. The Dean's planner lay open on today's date. Perhaps I can retrace his steps and create a timeline of events. Meet JL. Could that be Mom? Where's Widow's Drop? I've never heard of it. Looks like he completed all his chores for the day. I already knew the Dean was meeting Mom here. So where is she now? Looks like he cancelled his meetings on Friday and rearranged lunch with Keith. Oh, poor Keith. Jenny didn't know how she would break the news to him. But I should be the one to tell him. Gossip spreads like wildfire in Arthurton. He sure was working hard on that speech. I'm sad he won't get to deliver it. A book about chance. What are the odds that this was an accident? The 
Hawk and the Weasel and other bedtime stories. It could be important. Then again, it could have just joined the Dean for the ride. There are bits of glass and metal debris everywhere. He has burn marks on his hand. I think that's all the evidence I'm going to find here. She took one last look at the Dean's lifeless body. I'm sorry, Mr. Strasbury. I promise I'll get to the bottom of this. Jenny knew she should leave and call the police. But how often did a case like this come along? Never. There's more to this than meets the eye. Some of this evidence must be connected. So she opened her journal to join the dots. What was the apparent cause of death? the Dean was thrown from the balcony when he reached down to pick up his ring, which was stuck in the electrified ladder track. He grabbed the curtain, but it didn't slow him down. He landed on a bed of metal and glass debris. What is unusual about the Dean's death? strange mark on his neck. All the skin around his face is gray and gaunt. I've never seen anything like it before. He's holding my mom's ID card, which makes her the prime suspect. But why would she or anyone want to kill Dean Strausberry? Jenny suspected foul play, but what was the motive? Had she missed something? The watch! The Dean's watch stopped at 3.57 p.m. When I came into the library, the clock tower rang four times. The library only has one exit. And I haven't seen anyone but the Dean since I got here. Which meant if the Dean was murdered... The killer must still be here! He's getting away! Jenny could hear police sirens in the distance. Someone must have tipped them off. I'll catch the murderer and keep him busy until the cops arrive. Chasing after murderers was hardly the job of a little girl. Hey you! Stop! Despite surviving her fall without so much as a broken bone, Jenny couldn't help but feel she had failed. As the sirens grew louder, she knew it would only be a matter of time before the sheriff arrived. And then she'd have to explain why she hadn't called for help. But the worst feeling of all was that she had let the killer escape. As she drifted slowly into unconsciousness, Jenny heard a familiar voice. Concerned, gentle, soothing. Jenny? Oh, Jenny, what have you done? Mom? Freeze! You're under arrest! Thank you for watching. If you like this video, press the like button and leave a comment below. If you want to see more gaming contents, 
press the subscribe button. See you soon.